I am finally ready to go to India, and I think it's time to find out what's in the bag. Welcome everybody to Photo Joseph's Photo Moment, the first live three, actually now two times a week, two times a week show here at youtube.com slash photo Joseph. And I know some of you are going, what do you mean two times a week? I thought it was, the, we're changing things up a little bit. 9.30 a.m. is now only gonna be on Thursdays. And there wasn't even a show on Thursday. It's now a new schedule. <laughs> Starting today, we are doing an afternoon show on Mondays at 1.30 p.m. and then a morning show on Thursdays at 9.30 p.m., two shows a week instead of three. Now, I say that it's starting today, but the reality is that I'm actually getting ready to leave for India for a few weeks. So as soon as I get back, the real schedule will really start. But for now, this is what we're looking at. So with that said, let's get on with today's show. I am leaving for India tomorrow morning. And I have been packing this bag for a long time. I've put a lot of time, a lot of thought into this bag, into what I'm taking. I want to travel super light. It's about 25 pounds. That's pretty light. Uh, I want to travel super light and nimble. And the whole reason behind this is that I'm actually seeing, I'm actually visiting eight cities in 10 days, which means I'm going to be in most hotels only one night. And I want to ensure that I don't have to be dragging around a roller bag or carrying a second bag with me. I just wanted everything into a backpack. That means all my clothes, all my camera gear, all of everything else that I might need has to fit into one bag. Spent a lot of time researching bags, came up with this one right here. I'm gonna show this to you first and then we're gonna start digging into the bag. This is from Think Tank. It's actually a mind shift, part of the mind shift acquisition. So it's a mind shift think tank, rotation 180. And when I show you what this bag can do, I think you're gonna be pretty impressed. So let's just start off with that. I'm actually gonna, this is gonna be a challenge here because I have all my wires on. So I gotta try, not, try and do this without breaking anything. Buckle it all up, but let's see. Let's go out for the uh, let's go for the studio shot here, and let me show you what this bag can do. All right, so clipped in normal backpack. Away we go. All right. Try not to bump the mic too much there. Normal backpack. You can see how it fits on. You know, kind of a standard like day pack backpackers type backpack. Um, where's the camera gear? All right, one of the things I didn't want to do was have to take my bag off and set it in the dirt to get to my camera gear. Here's what happens. Okay, little thing on the side here. I reach down and I release this, grab this, and you ready for the rotation part? Start dropping things, knocking things off. Normally that doesn't happen. And now, my little fanny pack. Inside of this fanny pack is my camera gear. The camera bag portion is a separate piece. As a fan, this actually can be completely removed, which then slides back around into place like so. Has a little security thing, a little magnet. Just, it's not like a, it's a security thing. It just kind of holds that in place. And one of these days I'll get used to getting that in. There we go. And that is the backpack. Kind of cool, right? There's a lot more to it, but that is the main feature of this thing. I think it's really, really awesome. Now let's take a look at what's inside of it after I pick up this thing that I dropped here. So what do you guys think of that? Kind of neat, right? Okay, so now let's start going through some of the stuff I've attached to the bag and then we'll go into it. So again, hands-free being the key here. I've got the GoPro mounted on here. I've got this um, GoPro mount on here that I've talked about on the show before. This is in place. I actually might replace it with a Peak Design one. That's one of the things that's showing up today. I gotta decide whether I like that one better or not. Over here, I've got a Peak Design clip that is for mounting the camera. This, the cool thing about this Peak Design clip is you, know, you can put it wherever you want. And I've been struggling with what's better, to have it here or down here? And then I realized I could actually put one in both places. That'll allow me to get it down there for some things and have it up here for others. So that's something that's coming today secondary peak design clip so I can mount that into place totally hands-free. So I'm pretty digging on that. But with that said, let's get this thing off of me. Fix my microphone cables. Try not to tear them off. God, it's really hard to wear a bag and have all these wires sticking into you. And uh, let's go in for the backpack. Let's go in for the camera gear part. Let's talk about that next. Okay, so I'm going to pull this out. And you can see how this whole thing comes out. Kind of sorted. Now it's closing the way. But again, it just rotates out. Now since I'm not wearing it, it's just going to slide out. There is a little cable on here, a little uh, strap that'll hold that in place. You can't just drop it. But now there is the camera portion of that. So let's set this guy down and we'll get into the clothing stuff later. That's what I'm going to wear on the plane. So I guess we'll just we'll pick that up later. Let's take a closer look at this part of it. So pretty small, right? I and mean, this looks pretty small here. Here's the thing. It is just the right size so that I can unzip this take the iPad. So this is the uh, 10, 
what is this called, 10.5 inch or whatever the current, just before the current generation, but the new ones are exactly the same size, iPad, and this fits perfectly into there. So let's do a quick top down look here. So this is the top down view. We're looking inside of the bag. You can see how the iPad just fits perfectly into there. Inside of this, I've got the gear that I'm taking. So let's just pull everything out and then we'll go through it all. So you can see there's actually quite a lot of stuff fitting into here as you'll notice when I start getting everything out of here. So I'm going to pull it all out and then we can discuss exactly what's in there and I'll explain my decision for each piece that I'm taking. I'll set this over here. Oh, I almost forgot. There's a little lid inside of here as well. A little Velcro lid in there. I've got my Pelican case with my Prograde SD cards. There's an extra battery in there and I've got another battery hidden somewhere else in here. All right, let's set this down. Cape Cod is saying, will it pass for carry-on? It looks a tad big. It'll pass. All right, cameras, G9 and GH5S. Now, this was a big part of the decision. I know I was going to take the G9. G9 because I want to focus on still photography, but I'm also going to vlog. I don't need really, really high-end video capability for what I'm doing. I just I want to have a good video camera for vlogging. So I decided to go with this one. Right now, the autofocus on this with the body detection is for video is really, really good. So for vlogging tile style stuff, I think it's going to be great. I'm actually going to be shooting at 1080, not even in 4K, because I know I'm going to want to do a lot of slow motion. So I decided, you know what? 1080. I'm just shooting 1080 all the way through. That way I can do the, what is it, 180 frame per second on here for the slow motion. It's going to be awesome. And that's just, I decided that's how I'm going to do it. So I've got that. Now, I was originally just going to go with just this camera. But I thought, you know, that's just, that's insane. You can't do a trip like this with just one camera. What if something goes wrong? You got to have a backup. So my first thought for backup was to take the GX85, right? The GX85 is awesome. It's this tiny little camera. I love this thing. I've had this one for years. It's a beautiful camera, super small and lightweight. But then I thought, well, hold on. If I take the GX85, obviously I need batteries for the GX85. I also need the charger for the GX85 because all of this is different than what goes in here, right? Different battery, different charger required. So then I took all of these things that I would have to take if I took the GX85. So I got the camera, two batteries, and a charger. And I weighed it up against the GH5S. And I realized that at this point, it was, I think, 20 grams lighter. The volume is about the same once you put all this together. And I thought, you know what? It actually makes more sense to just travel with another GE body. So I'm taking the GH5S, specifically the S instead of the regular GH5, because I'm not going to use it very often. It really is primarily as a backup. But this way, if I get into some super low light situation, um, especially if I'm doing video and I want to have that the dual ISO that I've got in the GH5S, I have it. I also have the super slow motion, 240 frames per second if I want to get something crazy slow, but I probably won't use that. So those are the two bodies. So G9 and the GH5S as basically as a backup. It's going to live in the case without a lens. That's basically it's going to be its home. Lens choice. All right. 8 to 18 for vlogging. That's going to be my main on here when I'm walking around just shooting video. But, you know, when I'm shooting mainly stills, when I'm really focusing on stills, I like to have prime lenses. I've talked about that on the show quite a bit. I just, I just pr pr prefer for, uh, prime lenses. So we have, we'll start with, uh, what are we going to start? We'll start with this. Yeah, we're going to start with this. The 20, no, we're going to start with this. Sorry. I was backwards there for a moment. This one, just showed up today. This is on loan to me from Panasonic. I do not have one of these of my own yet, so this is going to be the first time I've used it extensively. This is the 12 millimeter f1.4. That is the Leica 12 mil f1.4. Now, there's a possibility that I would just use this for vlogging and not even bring the 8 to 18. This could be a last minute decision this afternoon. I need to do a little comparison on there, see how I feel about that. It'd be great to go with one less lens, but it's obviously not as wide as the 8 to 18. Is it wide enough to be a vlogging lens? I don't know. We'll see. But the low light performance of this at f1.4 is fantastic. I've only really shot with this lens once and I loved it. And so this is going to be a chance to do that again. So that's the 12 mil f1.4. Then the Xiongyi lens that I use all the time, the 25mm f0.95, super, super shallow depth of field, great low light performance, um, just a fun lens overall, small, lightweight, purely manual. Take that one. And then the Noctocron, the 42.5mm f1.2. I figure that I'm going to be doing a lot of portraits, taking pictures of people there, and I want that shallow depth of field, I want that portrait range lens, so that's what that is. And then if I need anything longer, I'm taking this tiny little 35 to 100. This is so 70 to 200 mil equivalent. This is not a really great lens. It is a, let's see here, what is the aperture range on this? Um, F4 to 5.6, so it's quite slow. 
but it does give me that reach if I need it. If I decide that I'm, you know, I just, I need that longer reach, I've got this, I don't wanna take the big, huge 35 to one, well, big, huge, I mean, it's only this big, but I don't wanna take the big 35 to 100, I figure this'll do it. So, yep, I think this is gonna be fine for that. I probably won't ever use it, but at least I've got it if I need it. For stabilization, I'm not taking a tripod. I know some people think that's insane, but I don't wanna deal with a tripod. I don't like dealing with a tripod if I don't have to, so I'm just gonna take the platypod. This is the Ultra, the small one, I've got a little Manfrotto head on here that I ripped off of one of my other uh, uh, Mi Photo head on here, sorry, that I ripped off of a Mi Photo tripod. This is great. And as you saw, it all fits within that one little bag. I'm waiting for UPS to show up. They were supposed to show up earlier, but they haven't been here yet. They might show up in the middle of the show. Um, anyway, so that's my stabilization. So that is the extent of the majority of the camera gear. There is one more thing that is just sitting on the top of my bag right now, and that, of course, is the microphone. So the Rode... Uh, this is the Rode uh, Smart, uh, no, Rode Video Mic Pro Plus that I just looked at last week. Um, just got it in, did some tests on it. Really, really liked where that came, uh, how that came together. It sounds great. Still not thrilled about this thing sticking off the back of it, but there's not much that you can do about that. I did figure out though when it's on here, if it really is getting in my way, having that um, sticking off the back on there, I did realize that if I un just unplug that, then it really is primarily out of my way. My head still hits here but it's okay, it's not as bad as when this is up. So if it's getting in my way, if I'm not shooting video, obviously, um, I can just unplug that. So, you know, it's still not ideal. I still wish it came out of the side, but it'll, it'll have to do. All right, that is, I do believe everything photographically. Oh, the GoPro, we talked about the GoPro. You, GoPro, you saw that mounted on there, the GoPro Hero 7, so that's gonna be there for, primarily for video stuff when I'm kinda, Hey, going through the airports, walking through cities and towns and stuff, and I just want to have some kind of a transitional video. It's going to mostly be shooting the, um, the hyperlapse, time-lapse, whatever it's called, uh, function. So that's primarily what that's going to be used for. Okay, that's all the gear. Um, I do want to show you this. I'm not taking this with me, but it's part of that bag, that Rotation 180 bag. So the top part of the bag is, you're about to see, is just a big open space for clothing and that sort of thing. But if you wanted to have uh, make it into a camera bag, this is an extra insert that you can get for it. And so this gives you places to put more lenses, more camera bodies. So you can basically turn the big open spot of inside that backpack into one of these. And then also, uh, you can also get a rain cover for it. Not taking this, it's not gonna rain, but um, if you're going somewhere rainy, you got a rain cover that's designed for that bag, size for that bag. Okay, all right, let's uh, give a moment here to just get some of this stuff out of the way here. And then, all right, that's the extent, oh, oh, one more. Almost forgot this. Um, neutral density filter. So someone on the show had mentioned when I, I did a show recently about neutral density filters and someone mentioned this company called Aurora Aperture that has a, apparently a very, very nice high-end filter. I reached out to them. They said, oh, we know your show. We love your show. We'd like you to try one of these out. Now this is not the newest one and it is the darker level. This is an ND32 to 2000. They didn't have the one that I would normally use for vlogging. So I have to take my older ND filter with me as well, but I am gonna bring this one if I am in a situation where I have enough brightness where I can use it. And you know, who knows, maybe I'll end up being able to use it a lot more than I think. I will have that. So I'll be able to tell you guys what I think about this when I get back. But what's really cool about this, this is one of the features that I was really excited about. Look at this. See this little handle here? Can you hear this? it stops, it stops. So as you're rotating, you get to, to the brightest and darkest settings on it, it actually stops, it doesn't just keep spinning. I'm very excited to work with this. And apparently, it's a very high quality lens uh, filter. Okay, let's get into the main bag. So I believe in packing everything inside of other bags. So this just makes life so much easier. So you've got, you know, dop kit, little pills and things, clothing, bags of cables, bags of chargers, and bags of drones. Okay, this, oh, drone, singular. This, I just took everything out of that main compartment. So I like to have everything in some type of other little bag in here. These first three bags, these are awesome. These are from Think Tank. These are the cable management system. This is a cable management 30, 20, and 10. So a variety of sizes of little bags. You can see they've got a clear window on them so you can see inside of them. This biggest one, I couldn't believe this. It fits perfectly the DJI Mavic Air. So I've got my Mavic Air in here, the remote controller, all three batteries, and the charger all fit inside of here. Like everything is in this one bag right here. So this is awesome. That is now the new home for the Mavic Air. The middle one here, 
which is actually quite loose. I don't have a whole lot of stuff in here. This middle one is storing, um, let's see here, lots of other little things. Let's just start kind of pulling through them, going through them. Got a suction cup mount. This is so that I can mount the GoPro onto the windshield of a car. We've got, oh, cleaners, good. Put it this way, <laughs> the Narbox. So the Narbox, you've seen, I've done a lot of discussion about the Narbox before. This is both backup and an editing solution. So I will back up all my media to this, and then I'll access my media from this onto the iPad Pro. Incidentally, I'm not bringing a laptop. You might have noticed that. I'm going to do all of my photo and video editing using the iPad Pro and the Narbox. So the iPad will be running Lightroom CC for all the photo editing and LumaFusion for all the video editing. So if you manage to actually see any vlogs while I'm away, if I actually manage to edit them and get them up online, they will all be coming out of LumaFusion, no Final Cut, no laptop with me. So that's in the bag. And then other little things, um, oh yeah, tiny little Samsung SSD drive. This one's half a terabyte. They make a terabyte size of this thing. Can you believe, I still can't get over this thing. I mean, it's just so, look at this tiny, tiny little thing. USB-C, super fast, super lightweight, and this gives you, uh, this is essentially backup for this. So I copy everything from here to here as a secondary backup. And oh, another GoPro battery. This is basically the power bag. Um, oh, SD card reader, Lightning SD, and a tiny little micro SD uh, to USB so I can take the media from the GoPro and from the drone and into here and off we go. All right, that's everything in that bag. Now, the next one is charging stuff. So this is all the charging bits and bobs that I need. There is, starts off with the huge battery pack, the Goal 070. This is a big like 1700 or something milliamp battery power monster thing. And then I also have in here, um, I've actually done a whole show on this, the Ar uh, Armorno, Amorno little uh, power plug thing. This is really slick for international traveling. It's, it's one of these things where you've got, you know, there's your European plug, you've got your UK plug, US, Australia. Look, it's US, and now it's Australia. Um, but it's not just that it's a converter or an adapter to the plug. It also has, let's do a close up on here. It also has, I'm gonna find them. There it is, a bunch of USB ports on the bottom and a USB-C port on the side. So you can plug a ton of stuff into this to charge it from, charge from it. It does a maximum of, what is it, uh, two, 5.6 amps max out total. And the plugs will do up to 2.4 amps each, obviously maxing out at 5.6 total. So pretty nice little adapter in there. These are the GH series battery chargers. This is the new charger that comes with the G9, and I don't think it comes with the GH5S. I think the GH5S still comes with the older one. Maybe newer shipping versions do. But this is the new one. It's smaller and lighter than the previous one, and this plugs in via USB. So you can plug this into this guy to charge the battery. So just a smaller, lighter solution than we had before. So I got two of these in here, um, and then just all the cables bunched up together every possible cable that I would need. So that is my entirety of my power system in there. So let's see, that's all the camera, that's all that stuff, that's all that. Okay, um, just you know, personal care stuff, obviously things like deodorant, toothbrush, um, hand sanitizer, beard balm, lip balm, toothbrush, toothpaste, um, nails, it's just some tips for traveling, stuff like this. If you don't do big adventure trips like this one, um, I got saline nasal spray in there. Your nose gets dried out if you're in a really dry environment that you're not used to. It's something you might want to consider. Like I take that whenever I go to Las Vegas because I just, I hate having a really dry, crunchy nose. That's great for that. Neosporin in case I hurt myself. Um, this, I realize this bag makes me look like a hypochondriac. I swear I'm not. <laughs> But it's, um, it's a variety of things. You've got like headache medicine, diarrhea medicine. You've got um, uh, vita I got a daily vitamin in here, a probiotic in here because I'm going to be eating all kinds of weird things in a weird environment. And I figure pro probiotic, let's get the gut levels up a little bit. Um, Tylenol in case I got a headache. You know, little things like that. There is one thing that I wanted to point out in here. Oh, actually two. Hold on to that one. Um, a little toothpicks, little toothpicks with the floss, dental floss on them. Those are awesome. All this stuff, by the way, is linked down below. There's a link down there to a page on my website that has everything. Um, Pepsi AC in case I get you know, indigestion. Cold medicine in case I get a cold. Like, it's kind of ridiculous, but there you go. And then the last one that's in here, it's one of these things. It's one of these tiny ones. If I can figure out which one it is. I swear, I'm not a hypochondriac. There it is. No, that's the tunnel. Somewhere in here, but I don't know. Now I've lost it. There it is. Melatonin. So here's a neat little thing. If you've never used melatonin before, research it. It's, a, it's all natural. It's a chemical, or is it called a chemical? Chemical that your body creates when you go to sleep. This is in pill form, so you can take it to help you go to sleep. And it's really effective, and I've used this definitely before. It's very effective for recovering from jet lag, for getting to sleep when you need to sleep to get back onto schedule. I have discovered recently, and I'm going to be using it for the first time on this trip, a new app 
that is so cool. It's called Time Shifter. Let me find my thing and plug this in so I can show you. Time Shifter will guide you through your sleep schedule to tell you when to sleep, when to be awake, when to take melatonin, when to drink coffee, when not to drink coffee, when to expose yourself to light, when not to expose yourself to light, to optimize your path towards recovering from jet lag. And the schedule isn't just when you get there, what to do. The schedule actually starts multiple days before you leave. So you go into the app and you program in your whole flight schedule, uh, you know, where, you're, where you're going from and to, when you take off and land and so on. So it knows when you're on layover, it's not going to tell you to sleep on a layover. It knows how long your flight is, it tells you when to go to sleep on the flight, and so on and so on. And like I said, it actually starts a few days before. So since we're already into the plan, I'm going to switch up to choose my return plan. Uh, let's see here, let me get to the return plan. So that will show you what it looks like backing up. So let's do this, there we go. All right. Um, oh, no, that's, we didn't get to the return. Let's see, view the return plan. So. This shows starting a couple days before. So Thursday, November 29th is when this calendar starts. And you see it shows me I can drink coffee up until about noon. And then I gotta stop drinking coffee. I should go to bed at nine o'clock that night. So a little bit earlier. Normally I have it on a 10 to 5 a.m. schedule, 10 p.m. to 5 a.m. schedule. That's my normal sleep schedule. So that you tell it that as well. It is telling me now for that first night that's on the schedule, take the melatonin, go to sleep at nine o'clock, wake up at 4 a.m. The next morning, you see it shows when I can have coffee, have coffee up until about 11 a.m. The yellow band there is showing me bright sunlight and then moderate sunlight. Now, obviously, at this point, I could be running around the city, so I can't really control the daylight, but I can control the coffee intake, right? Caffeine intake. And then that uh, there's the next night, it says to go to bed at 8 p.m. I get up at 3 a.m., so it's shifting a little bit. Then it has me taking a nap that day. If I can manage, I should take a nap between 9 and 10. That little, little blue happy face there, that's a nap time because then I've got a really long stretch of being awake and go ahead and drink that coffee. And then my first flight starts at two in the morning. You can see the little airplane on there. It says two in the morning is when that flight starts. Um, halfway through that flight, cut off the coffee. And then I've got a layover and then I got on my next flight, which is in Japan. And so that's showing me in Tokyo time at 6 p.m. And I should immediately take melatonin and go to sleep. Sleep for about half of that flight and so on and so on. So it really maps out the entire thing. And then even once you get home, what your schedule is at home for the next couple of days to ensure when you are or are not taking melatonin, when you are or are not drinking coffee. And the reviews on this are incredible. So Time Shifter is the app. It's a free app. You get one download, one um, itinerary for free, and then they have a $25 a year plan. I think I saw something about like a $10 one-off purchase, but um, 25 bucks a year. So if you're traveling you know, more than a couple times a year, it could be totally worth it. So I've never used it before until now. I'm trying it out now. I was up at, what time did I wake up this morning? Four, no, three o'clock this morning for the schedule. Tomorrow I wake up at 1 a.m. to be on the schedule. It's super, super interesting. So I will obviously tell you all about that when I get back and how effective it was, but the reviews on that have been tremendous. Okay. That was all this stuff I wanted to go through. That's that and that. I feel like I'm missing something. Oh, the clothing. Ha, very important part of it. Okay. Who's gonna clean up this mess? Seriously, this is ridiculous. Okay. The clothing is an important part of this, a very important part of this. You might have noticed when I pulled this stuff out, I said, this is my clothing. This is the entirety of my clothing. And I know some of you are thinking, are you insane? No. I have uh, purchased, most of this is new, um, some of these things I already had, but I have purchased all new clothing that is designed specifically to be worn repeatedly, to be easy to wash and dry, you know, wash it in the sink, dry it out at night, um, just hang it out, dry by, dry by the next morning to be odor free. It's all kind of special materials. They're all fairly expensive stuff, but this stuff really, really works. So in here is a spare shirt, pair of socks, uh, underwear, one pair of socks, one pair of underwear, There's actually two pair of socks in here, and um, the shirt and that's it. I'm going with one pair of pants, two shirts, two pair of underwear, two pair of socks, and that's the entirety of it. So let's start with the pants because these pants are so cool. Company that makes these is called Clothing Arts. Again, links to all this stuff down below. These are the Clothing Arts Travel and Pickpocket Proof Pants. Pickpocket Proof. How do you make pants pickpocket proof? I'm not going to show you, I'm not going to give you a full demo of everything, but I'm going to show you one pocket to give you an idea of what it is. All the pockets on here are designed like this. They're all a little bit on the crazy side. So let me get a close up shot set up. So here's your standard side pocket. This is my, you know, stick my hand in my side pocket. First of all, it's got a zipper. That's pretty obvious. You got a zipper. Okay, great. You have this extra button on here. This is kind of your last measure of security. The, the idea here is like you're getting on a subway or something. You're going to be totally packed in. 
you're going to be packed like sardines. You have, uh, you have no idea who's going to be bump up, bumping up against you. You close that up and you've got this button and the zipper. Okay, so that, that's cool, right? That's like a pretty good level. Let's rawr, open that back up. I'm not going to close that either. Open the zipper. Okay, now I got my pocket, right? Well, inside of this pocket, if I open it up like this, you'll see there is another zipper pocket. A little zipper inside of here, and that will actually hold. Where did I put my phone? Somewhere around here. Set it down. There it is. This inside pocket will actually fit my iPhone 10. So that can go in there and then zip up. And then if I wanted to, I could zip this. And if I really wanted to, I could close that. So triple level three levels of protection. Open this back up again. And there's another hidden pocket in here. If you look right here, so there's your main pocket. Here there is a little Velcro tab for a secondary pocket inside of that. So this is a great place for a wallet, and it fits my wallet just perfectly. So you've got all that. The back has something like that as well. In the back, there's a place for your passport that fits perfectly. You open this up. There's a second zipper inside of here. It's a bunch of hidden pockets, pockets within pockets. And the whole idea, again, is that it's pickpocket proof. That's their intention. That's their marketing slogan. So we're going to give it a try. These are made out of, I don't know, whatever, some special material blend so that you can wear them all day long or, all, I mean, all week or two weeks or whatever long. And if I do decide to wash them, I can dry them out overnight, hang it up. Okay. That's that shirt. I have two different shirts. Again, special material. Um, it's like a polyester blend, wrinkle free, s dries out super quickly, lightweight, very comfortable. I've worn everything to kind of test it out a bit. You've seen this. I was wearing it in the video the other day. Um, it's just nice, slightly stretchy, really comfortable, nice shirt. Even this one has a, a pseudo hidden pocket, but an extra pocket in here so you can like stash some cash in there or something like that. But I got two shirts. I got this one. This was a company called Royal Robins. You can get these on Amazon. Um, the other one that's in here is from REI, so you can only get it from REI. But this one, same idea, kind of a cool color. I open up. Just it's long sleeve button up shirts, extra pockets. Again, designed to be worn, washed, and worn. Off you go. Even the socks are important. So two pair of socks in here, and I'll show you why they're both in here. This, the one that I'll wear on the plane is set out separately. These are from a company called Darn Tough. Darn Tough Vermont is the full name of the socks. I got a, a high pair and a short pair. Again, these are designed to not smell. They're kind of odor resistant, whatever it is they do, microbial, I don't know, whatever. Um, designed to be worn many, many days. Wash them in the sink. They'll dry by morning. I've tested all of this. Totally works. The reason that I picked these up, and these are not cheap socks. They're like $15 to $20 a pair. They have a lifetime warranty for one. If you manage to get a hole in it somehow, they will replace them. I don't know how you stay in business doing that, but there you go. But at the local travel shop, and these you can get these on Amazon. Again, link down below as well. The local travel shop, they told me that all of the PCT hikers wear these. That's the Pacific Crest Trail. I live in Oregon. The Pacific Crest Trail is a hiking path, if you've never heard of it, that goes from California all the way up to Washington. It goes from the Mexican border to the Canadian border. So it's a, one of those big hikes that all kinds of people do. It's, I don't know how many thousand miles. It's crazy. It takes like all summer to do. Um, but PCT hikers wear these. That's good enough for me. If PCT, PCT hikers wear them, then we're good. Even the underwear, I'm not going to pull them out for you, but even the underwear are special microbial, blah, 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 fast drying underwear. Awesome. Okay. So there's that. The socks that I will wear on the airplane though, are a little bit different. These are compression socks. These are graduated compression socks. Now, I've never bought these before, but this trip is about 33, 34 hours of travel from airport to airport. That's not even door to door. It's going to be like 40 hours door to door, some crazy thing. These are tight at the bottom, and then they get less and less tight as they go up. There's like four, three or four levels of pressure on there. The whole idea is to help with blood circulation, help you from getting clots, all that. You know, if you're 18, it's probably not such a big deal. I'm not anymore. And so it just seemed like a good idea. And they're super, super comfortable. So the really high socks put that pressure on your legs graduating up. Seems like a good idea. And then the scarf, this is a uh, Middle East style Shemag scarf. It's a square. You fold it in half as a triangle. And the reason I'm doing this is because you can wrap it over your head and over your face. So if I'm in somewhere where there's, it's either really dirty or um, a lot of wind or dirt blowing around or whatever it might be, I have a way to completely cover my head and face, but still have my eyes exposed so I can shoot and so on. So that's this. Plus, it's just a nice big thing. I can, you know, it's a scarf if I get cold somewhere and so on. I think, I think that's actually everything. If I forgot anything in the video, it's I, the list down below is very long, so it's all in there if, uh, if there's anything that I forgot. And that, I believe, is everything that I'm taking. So 
with that, we're going to jump into the Q&A. I see a few questions popping up in the live chat here. So if anybody has any questions about what you've seen or have any suggestions and other things I should take, I've got about uh, six hours to get stuff before I uh, shut down for the night and then go to the airport in the morning. But if, uh, if you have any feedback, comments, or thoughts on this, either drop them into the comments if you're not watching live, or if you are watching live, then drop them into the live chat, and we'll take a look at them right now.